So usually for my type videos, at least for my personal growth videos, I draw pictures, but I'm in Athens, Georgia, and I did not bring any of my drawing materials, and the reason I, why I'm here is because I just gave my TED Talk. And anyway, without further ado, INTJs. INTJs are more likely than other types to struggle with their social presence. And this means that on average, INTJs are the types who are less likely to be as quickly liked, accepted, or trusted socially. They may also come off as a rather low-profile personality. Even if individual INTJs are quite social or have a strong social network, they had to work harder in order to get there. And this is because INTJs may come off as cold or uninviting even when they have no ill intentions. This is why INTJs are stereotyped as villains in movies. Often they are portrayed as evildoers with little physical presence or social grace, but nevertheless use their highly calculating and brilliant minds to mastermind and take over the world. Moo ha 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 ha, I'm an INTJ. Anyway, this is a prejudice from other types that is absolute bullshit and is not correct at all. INTJs are no more likely than other types to walk the dark path. And they're usually benevolent. And they use their strong strategic planning, forecasting, and ability to see the big picture to bring people they care about or the world to a better place. I'm not just saying this, I've talked to many in INTJ and asked about what their ambitions or hopes are. And this is the case. They usually want to bring positivity to the world. However, we tend to judge a book by its cover, and if INTJs are not bouncing balls of shooting happy, happy, joy, joy beams of light, this does not mean they're not inwardly positive. They're viewed as dark by other types because the nature of how INTJs operate is foreign to them. Others view long-range vision planning with suspicion, and INTJs use Expert thinking, which is seen as calculating. Yes, INTJs are strategic, however, it is an absolute prejudice in our culture today to automatically assume calculation and strategy is evil. In fact, strategy is necessary to make the world a better place. To not use strategy is, you know, you see these people who proclaim, Oh, I want to make the world a better place, but they don't have any means to actually accomplish the goal. So people may easily trust or be drawn to charismatic or big uh, social presence people, but whether this person has actual substance is another matter. So it's odd in our culture that we prefer charisma over strategy or trust charisma over strategy. INTJ's low social presence comes from an inferior expert sensing, which is a function that helps give the impression of a powerful physical presence. And expert sensing allows you to act quickly and make uh, one's actions noticeable. It, so it gives the impression of strength and dominance that way. I know extroverted thinking could give some of that kind of impression of strength and dominance, but it's a different kind of vibe. Um, I think extroverted sensing is a more like out there noticeable kind of thing. And this does not mean that extroverted sensing is bad. And usually an INTJ would have a love-hate relationship with this function. Unlike INFJs, INTJs have a low extroverted feeling, which may cause them to lack social grace and a natural sense of social pleasantry. So according to uh, Socionics, INTJs have extroverted feeling as a polar. According to John Beeb, experts, I mean extroverted feeling as a polar. And according to John Beeb, Extroverted feeling is uh, the seventh function of INTJs, so not a very strong function. 
Extra feeling could win others over through their hearts by being diplomatic and not pressing the wrong buttons. With a low extrovert sensing and even lower extrovert feeling, it's harder for INTJs to win others by seeming likable. And often the case or 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 noticeable. It's often the case INTJs have to depend on the fruits of their hard work and the merits of their ideas alone in order to win others over time. It's not an uncommon story to hear of INTJs who work very hard and actually do something of significance but are passed over by others who are suave and smarmy, who talk with loud mouths but do not actually produce anything of substance. And I'm personally affected because my dad is such an example of an INTJ who gets passed over at work for many decades. And he actually does the work. He comes up with the great ideas. And he watches others get promoted around him who are um, more ingratiating or social. So my dad does not really project himself well. One time, a couple of people at work even stole his ideas. I think... A famous example of INTJ is Nikola Tesla, who is always in the shadow of a more dominant presence of Thomas Edison, who often took credit for Tesla's ideas. These stories I talked about, my dad and also Nikola Tesla, I'm not saying that my dad is, you know, famous because he's not famous. <laughs> are by far the more common real-life stories of INTJs than the ones you hear about them as being villains, which is absolutely a phony idea. So, it is true that INTJs can rise socially and become accepted or become recognized for their work, but it's usually through someone making the effort to actually see that they are accomplishing, see what they are accomplishing, rather than just on appearances. If you're not an INTJ, please make the effort to see past likability or low social presence and see how their work is meaningful, powerful, or good. In order for INTJs to personally grow, they have to start viewing extrovert sensing and extrovert feeling as equally valid worldviews as their own. INTJs have to see the value of expert sensing's ability to create a presence. Often, an INTJ will view this with distaste, seeing it as showy. However, there is no problem with style so long as it's backed up with actual substance. INTJs usually have no problem with the substance part, so they should not feel guilty or inauthentic about expressing extrovert sensing to back up that substance. Extrovert sensing is often viewed from the outside as animalistic, so to use imagery is seen as the predator who's chasing the prey, as a dog who eats dog, as a gruesome boxing match, as presence over substance as the beast as indulgence in luxury or smoking or drugs and it doesn't have to be this way and uh, some of these characterizations are not true and in, a, in its healthy state expert sensing is the fighter who loves to fight for its own sake someone who won't let obstacles get in the way of tangibly reaching one's goal someone who acts immediately and quickly to get uh, to these goals. Someone who is a clever card player who bluffs the competitor, the action hero, Winston Churchill with its inspiring speeches, and it could also become, uh, be used with, um, is also associated with refined taste when expert sensing is in its sublimated states. Anyway, it's all a matter of perspective. You can never truly develop expert sensing if you view it as negative, as inferior to intuition, or as a necessary evil. Otherwise, you'll be very reluctant 
in its development and this energy is draining. You have to see it as significant in its own right. This is the only way forward. You have to develop its positive aspects rather than its negative and INTJs will be influenced by expert sensing, viewing it with both disgust and fascination. And it's often an expression of the inferior function to sometimes be tempted to express its negative forms. So in order to avoid making this video too long, I'm going to talk about INTJs and extra feeling in an upcoming video. Um, so, okay, bye.